What up? Kira here. Ready to learn. Get my learn on. Okay, you guys. I know that one of my last videos was about Japan. And now another one of my videos is going to be about Japan. I just, I have this like romanticized vision of what Japan is like. And so I tend to be a little attracted to when I'm perusing YouTube videos for like, what do I want to learn about? And I come across something that is about unique Japanese vending machines in Tokyo. I can't turn it down, yo. So that's what we're going to watch uh, from Nasea, uh, Sophia Nygaard, um, or Nagard, however uh, she says it. I tried unique Japanese vending machines in Tokyo. I'm going to do this and get my display on here. And let's go ahead and see about these vending machines. Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, we're going to be visiting some of the most unique vending machines in Tokyo. Yes, that's right. We're heading back to Japan, and we're going to be hitting up their vending machines. Doesn't that city look amazing? I mean, I live in arguably one of the best cities in the world. Chicago is phenomenal. If you haven't visited, you should ch definitely check it out. But Tokyo just looks so badass. I'm just saying. Hard. Now, for some context, Look there at are that. a ton of vending machines in Japan. Like, they are everywhere. And they mostly sell... Yeah, so we don't have anything like that in Chicago. Sell ...convenient items like hot and cold coffee and tea. Fuck yeah, hot coffee! Water and sports drinks for people to grab on the way to school or work. Or in our case, to fend off jet lag. Apparently, Japan has the <laughs> highest vending machine per capita rate, with one machine for every 23 people. Which which isn't really a what? Oh, one machine for every 23 people. There are, I don't know the number, but there is a fuck ton of people in Tokyo. That I thought existed until right now, but it makes sense because it almost feels like you're outnumbered when you're there. And is Sapporo, oh, that it's beer. They're selling beer out of vending machines. We are such a prudish country, America. People have mentioned that Seriously. these 5 million some vending machines can make up to 7 trillion yen per year, which is about $70 billion. And I will say that on our Japan trip last year, we definitely partook in many of the vending machines stationed around Tokyo, especially because of how convenient they are if you have a Pasmo or Suica card for the subway. You can just get whatever you want, whenever you want. However, if I'm sorry, that's awesome. <laughs> Seriously, I need to go to this city. I'm about to cry. I need to go to this city. It was only after our trip that we discovered how many different kinds of vending machines there are. Like what? ones that sell hot foods like what? pizza, fresh produce, mystery electronics, snails what? in a can. There's even a vending machine restaurant with no people in it. What? Just a room full of hot Are you kidding me? Machines. So in light of all of that, we've scouted out Jesus. more interesting vending machines in Tokyo to visit while while we're there. All right, to Tokyo. I like her little dress. So obviously the first step to getting to our Japanese vending machines was to fly to Japan. Now in Tokyo, Clearly. we stayed at a hotel in the Shinjuku area, which has like a giant train station that served as a hub for us to get all over the place in Tokyo. It's a really big station. I think you can take a train within the station to another part of the station. That's and awesome. Our vending machine God, that's cool. Adventure day was like our third day in Japan. So needless to say, Ugh. we were a little jet lagged, but excited to explore. All right. So we are right now here in Shinjuku Park near our hotel, and we are ready to set off on our vending machine excursion. Our first vending machine was one that we had seen written about online that contains a couple of interesting food items and is located in the Kichijoji area. Kichijoji? Does that sound right? I feel like this video is just going to be full of me saying Japanese locations pretty badly. I think she sounds pretty good so far. Medi mediocrily. <laughs> Is that about what she's, she's about to say? I'm looking at the caption right now. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I not that I know how to speak Japanese by any stretch of anybody's imagination, but I did work in a uh, fine dining Japanese restaurant, and I did learn a little bit of how to pronounce uh, some of the words uh, while I was there. And I, I think that she's doing an okay job. Mediocrely. Yeah, so just be prepared. Mediocrely. So let's do this. I could probably use a coffee from like a normal vending machine. Yeah. Yeah, let's hit one of those first. Well, <laughs> that's the way. So we hopped on the subway heading west to- I love vending machines that have coffee in it, by the way. We don't have many of those around the, the States at all. But if you are on like I-80 or whatever, <clears throat> like a big uh, freeway interstate, and you stop at a, like a rest stop that's just basically toilets and some vending machines, then you can find coffee and it's always shit. It always is shitty, shitty, shitty coffee. To get to our first vending machine. Now, Kichijoji is a semi-residential, but very cool and desirable area that's a little outside the center of Tokyo, that besides having many shopping alleyways and boutique restaurants, is also the home to some very scenic parks that house many interesting vending machines. All right, so we are here at Inogashira Park. Yes. 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 Inogashira yes. Park. Yes. 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 <laughs> we have Win Rin, hey. who is a Japanese YouTuber and Lolita model who helped us Ooh. out last year with our Tokyo makeover. And she is here to help us identify what unique things we shall be eating from these vending machines. And maybe eating a couple herself? I don't know, I won't put pressure. <laughs> maybe, maybe she wants to try one or two. Yeah. Now there are a lot of vending machines in this park, but one that's caught my attention in particular is this one that has canned bread in it. I mean, once what? I had canned bread, I was like, I need it. <laughs> I need it. That baby needs it too. We all need it. Now, canned bread is something that I didn't think actually. This woman's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> that baby needs it too. Actually it's funny. existed outside of SpongeBob. Like it's in that one episode where Squidward goes to the grocery store and is like amazed to find it. So when I heard about the opportunity to eat canned bread, I already I mean, that was just a joke, right? On, on SpongeBob, which is really funny. I mean, I'm guessing it was a joke. Maybe I mean, maybe they heard a canned bread before and they thought, oh, it'd be really funny to put canned bread into the cartoon. That could be a thing. But I, my assumption, if I actually watched SpongeBob, uh, would have been like, oh, that's a funny joke, canned bread. But to actually have it be a thing is, that's pretty cool, canned bread. Well, I'm into I it. I had to go for it. And inside that same machine, there's also grasshopper and, and hornet larva. Hornet larva. Now to clarify, the hornet larva are for eating, not for like growing into your own colony of hornets. But besides right. seeming like a sort of interesting snack, I was very- Is that what you, do you want to eat hornet larva? Has anybody out there eaten hornet larva? idea that this vending machine like paired these two things together. So up first we purchased our bread. Okay, so it says- I also, I also like the little kitty wallets right beneath it. Like here, here's some food items. Oh, and if you need a place to keep your spare change, you could also buy these. It's very, very funny. Because pan is bread in oh. Japanese and can is, you know, C A N. So, oh, so pan it's very pan. simple, okay. And then this one, it has a little dad joke okay. down here. It says caramelu no panda. And That's it's pan because of bread and panda. Panda. Ah. So we decided to get strawberry flavored bread for 550 yen or about five bucks. Oh, it's light actually. Oh. It sounded so heavy, but it feels so light. I like that it says for emergency snack on the bottom right. <laughs> and then we had to purchase the insects. Now we decided to go for the hornet larva. Of course you the did. Grasshoppers. Yeah, I, I mean, grasshoppers are a little more, I mean, I think they're a little, they, they're a little more common in the States, whereas, Hornet larva is not a thing here. It's just not a thing. Besides sounding more unusual, the hornet larva were also more expensive, so those were the ones I wanted. What can I say? I have expensive taste. This way. It's a high maintenance no, chick. No, the other way. The other way. Yeah. I'm nailing this, you guys. Oh, I'm so glad it's in stock. Now, I didn't know this beforehand, but as Rin Rin read, like on the signs on the machine, apparently people eat hornet larva for its like nutritional benefits. For morning energy or noon energy or night energy, 24 hours. Helps with tinnitus, wow. appetite, and muscle tiredness. 
Shit, I could use that right now. <laughs> like a five-hour energy. It sounds like something Chris Traeger would eat. I know, I agree. The store next door actually offered toothpicks to spear the larva, so we grabbed a couple and then found a place in the park to sit down and try our goodies. All right, so shall we start with the bread in a can or the hornet larva? Bread. Bread in the can, yeah. <laughs> start with the easy great. thing. Oh, it smells great, actually. <sighs> wow. I mean, it is just wow. like, Wow, that looks Shaped awesome. Red. It was like air sealed, right? Yeah. It's like our Casper mattress. I almost expected it to yeah. like expand once I took it out of Ooh, the That looks paper. real like fucking good. Oh my God, that looks good. I want to take a bite out of that. Yum. In cylindrical shape. It's like the leaning tower of pan in a can. <laughs> It was quite squishy though. Pan -pan. It's kind of fluffy actually. And it was kind of like laced with like a strawberry marbling throughout. Fuck yeah, oh. it was. Oh my God. It yeah, it felt like a croissant. It does kind of look like a croissant. There's sort of like um, air holes in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh, this is what everyone's been waiting for. So after a lot of lead up. All right, so cheers. Good. Cheers. It was time for us to actually eat the bread. Oh, mm. I really like it. It's jam. Mm-hmm. There's jam in here. It kind of tastes like fruity pebbles. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. It has the texture of a croissant, but the flavor of, of a fruity pebble. I like it. And I wow. The one who that sounds hella good. Liked it. The pigeons are in route, guys. They want this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, this is like their jam, literally. It was like almost a pun. How dare you? <laughs> it was so funny. I just said the word jam. Tyler also tried the bread. Oh, oh yeah. It's good where it's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is amazing. It definitely tasted good. It, it looks really good. More of a strudel. <laughs> it can, looks so like good. A Danish in a can. Oh Versus man. A plain bread in a can that I imagine the Squidwardian version to be. But this is probably more of a desirable product. No, this makes sense mm -hmm. as a snack, actually. Yeah. And it makes sense to be in a park. Yeah. I feel like you could just take this on a picnic. So after the bread, it was time to taste the hornet larva. Okay. Trying the hornet larva. She's holding a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> she can't turn it now. Ooh! Ah. Uh, Those groans are ah. being skeptical. <laughs> Subtitle, Rin Rin Groaning. <laughs> now, I wasn't exactly expecting Gross. the larva to be quite so soggy, ah. but when I sniffed them, they smelled okay. Actually, it kind of doesn't smell that bad. It kind of smells like a, sort of like a soy sauce, like a saltiness. Yeah. <laughs> which Rin Rin confirmed when she read the ingredients. There is soy sauce. Oh. It, there is the hornet larva, some sugar, and soy sauce, that's it. So there was some stuff Ugh. in there to soften the blow. That's a juicy one, look at that. Cheers. Rin <laughs> Rin, did you just fake out eating it? <laughs> She didn't eat it? <laughs> Rin Rin's betrayal aside, my first reaction was that it was honestly not all that bad. What I'll say is I can't tell it's a bug. It actually does taste a lot like the fermented soybean kind of thing. Oh, yeah. It kind of feels okay. like that, where it's kind of like a chewy bean. Rin Rin and I had been talking earlier about how it kind of smelled like natto, which is a slightly slimy fermented soybean dish, and it kind of tasted like that too. I see. <laughs> Do you want it, Rin Rin? Uh, I'm just so scared because I'm allergic to bees. Oh yeah, maybe oh, you shouldn't yeah. eat it. I yeah. licked it. Rin Rin, you didn't tell us. <laughs> I forgot. So Tyler <laughs> ate it in her stead. Oh, it's good. And weirdly, <laughs> he was into it. Oh, I like that. I want to get the big guy. All right, so Tyler found like a straight up full oh, in there. Oh, God. That's not a larva. That's just oh, a hornet mama. It's so crunchier. It's good. And apparently, oh, he liked that, too. Good, dude. It's like right up there with the bread. It's like turkey almost. Good. I don't know how to react to you right now. Why? Because I, I agree with you that it's like not that bad. <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call, call it good. It. I feel like he was either hamming it up for the camera, or maybe we were like feeling the energizing effects of the larva a little bit. They're like wiggling more. Yeah. <laughs> little larva. Doing great. But at that point, we had only really eaten a couple of larva each, so that seemed unlikely. Okay, so that was vending machine stop number one. Rin Rin's still holding everything. So we hopped back on the train and headed over to unusual- I can't eat it if it still looks like a bug. Okay, because I'm- I'm very adventurous when it comes to food. Okay, I, I truly am. I promise you. But- it's really hard, like, because I'm a terrified of bugs. And so it's really hard to imagine eating bugs. And then when they, they still look like the bugs, I didn't think they'd still look like the bug. That's gross. 
beautiful vending machine number two in Harajuku. Now the Harajuku area is like a fashionable shopping district with many stores, boutiques, and kind of Instagram cute food locations. However, this vending machine has nothing to do with any of that. It is a super spicy vending machine, but not like flaming hot Cheetos or What's the deal? Do they all have those little cat purses on the second row? It's like, here are four food items and here are some cat purses for you. Taki spicy, like Carolina Reaper or ghost pepper magnitude spice, which definitely seems entertaining, but doesn't- I'm shocked that she doesn't mention it. Like, oh, and then there are these little cat purses again. Seem very profitable or desirable as a vending machine product. So is this where we start our mini hot ones interview? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Now the machine itself is very eye-catching because there are a lot of flames and skulls on it, as well as disclaimers and instructions. Oh shit! I missed. With spicy Please stuff. be careful. Please never use it in play. How to feel the baby? Each person. Please never use it in play. Something spicy. Don't take this one to a love hotel. <laughs> now there were so many pictures. It's spicy and I feel ill after I eat, etc. is self-responsibility. Good luck. ...of peppers on the machine that I kind of thought that they might be selling like Carolina Reapers in a bag, but it turned out that they were like rice crackers in super, super spicy sauce. Spicy this sauce is like a that. traditional Japanese like snack, mm -hmm. but turned into really spicy. After looking at our options for a while, we decided to go with the scorpion ones. It says... I'm a pansy when it comes to spicy food, BT dubs. So I don't know if I, I would probably try it. Um, I think there's actually on our Chicago Reacts video um, from long years ago, I ate uh, some spicy noodles and you can see what a pansy I am in that video. Call the pain of the scorpion, extremely spicy. Caroline, when you aren't here, World number one Caroline. Is what? The pain of the scorpion, extremely spicy. It's also a little bit more expensive, so I don't know. Maybe it's fancier. And this snack had a Trinidadian scorpion pepper sauce on it, which is apparently like the second spiciest pepper in the world. And it yeah, no thanks. ominously came in a few protective layers. Yeah, so that's ominous. Things that, like you have to like have a clerk open for you. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I would like to note is that this machine was selling the same cat purses that the larva Thank you. In Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what's going on with the coin purses. They're just like part of the whole like canned bread, hornet larva, spicy snack rotation. Yeah. They just naturally go together. That's what it is. But regardless, we had to get a cat purse. Of course purse. you so have I to get a cat purse. Untold looking black cat. Surrogate crossing for the trip? Yeah. <laughs> so with our haul in hand, we settled in and braced ourselves for the spice. All right, so Rin Rin tapped out, which is definitely fair. It smells pretty spicy. Let me see. From the sign, we know that this is at least a million scovilles of heat. And to put wow, that in Wow, I don't know what that means, like but that's a lot. sauce is supposed to be about 2,500 scovilles, okay. and Tabasco is not not spicy. So this thing is crazy. The scoville thing is like really exponential. Scoville is the hype beast of measurements, is what I would say. We did have some water nearby, and Tyler also had his own- I was gonna like, say, you might want some plan. dairy. There's an ice cream place right there. That's the ice cream place we went to last year at the end of our Tokyo Fashion Makeover video, so I'm just gonna get that. And without Without further ado, we gave it a chomp. It did hurt my mouth and make me like salivate a lot. First bite tasty, a few seconds later, a little painful. I mean the crunch? But I feel like Tyler was quite visibly affected. <laughs> <laughs> we had brought our remaining bread in a can to use as a chaser, which actually came in handy. You got the paint can? Can <laughs> I'm surprised I'm still talking. How are you doing, Ty? Hiccuping. Oh, you're hiccuping? Oh, yeah, if you hiccup, then you know it's spicy. <laughs> are you having a meltdown? <laughs> Tyler's having a meltdown. Oh my God. Did you eat all of the pan can? It's okay, you can have it. He's off. He's worse off than I am. Should I have a second one? Go for it. Oh my God, she's crazy. I would say that this is more of a spicy challenge than a real food. I don't think I could yeah. eat a whole bag of them, even though I like them, which makes it kind of a weird choice for a vending machine. Yeah. Because I feel like you might want to try it once, but probably not do it again. Right. Maybe that's why they have the cat purses. <laughs> okay, I guess that was vending machine number two. It destroyed Tyler, but I'm still standing. <laughs> now, having seen yeah. what happened to Tyler, Rin Rin wanted to take a go herself. Uh, well, itadakimasu. Which was bold. <laughs> <laughs> 
especially since she opted to lick it, which I feel like is the worst way to go. It's like having a hole through my tongue. Uh, I pierced it. Uh, I feel like this makes me look pretty badass, so I'm liking this. Yes. I'm liking everyone else. And with our taste testing, spice quelling, and I guess my peacocking done, we grabbed yet another vending machine coffee. I'm gonna drink like five of these today. I love Craft Boss. Craft Boss is boss and headed over to vending machine number three or this woman is really funny by the way i feel like she and i would get along really well should i say vending machines plural since we were really going to what has been described as a creepy vending machine corner <laughs> i am not calling it that. yes people call it that they do call it that other people call it a creepy vending machine cluster so i figured we had to go check it out ourselves so we took the subway east to akihabara which is what i would describe as a busy neighborhood that is known for being a center for anime, gaming, and tech culture. Cool. It also has a lot of themed cafes, like maid cafes, as well as a ton of gachapon maid or cafes that sell little collectibles. It's a capsule machine selling mini capsule machines. All right, now we just have to find the vending machine. <laughs> it's so very meta. She's selling mini vending machines. The yes. corner is a short walk from the station, like the creepy corner. Bridge. She said she wasn't gonna call it the creepy corner. And down a residential street, so we found it pretty quickly and took a little peek inside. Rin Rin's freaked out a little bit. I am. <laughs> we kind of just stepped inside a bit and I already got the creepy feeling up my legs. The corner itself is under a dilapidated looking apartment building or house, and I think it objectively looks a little haunted. And that, I think, <laughs> is why people think this is creepy. To be fair, we did come at like the exact right time of day to be. It objectively looks a little haunted. I love it. Be freaked out. Because uh, yeah, it's like yeah. 6 p.m. and mm -hmm. the sun is setting. So it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> but the vending machines themselves do also look a little dusty. Like maybe they've been abandoned. I mean, looking oh, at fuck. how run down Look at that. Jesus, is, does anybody use it. that one? And they do sell what seems to be a purposefully odd set of items. Oh. Plastic, plastic figurines, charger, some... Bells. Was that a huge bug? The bells are almost the weirdest ones. <laughs> the bells like, are bells. really there hilarious. There are a lot of notes and signs that seem like... If you have cats, though, it makes kind of kind of makes sense. They've been left behind for you to discover. Rin Rin started reading one that was inside the vending machine. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? What? What's happening? No, it says something really gross. I don't even know if you want this in your thing. The sign apparently says, and I'm paraphrasing here, that you can enjoy these bath salts for 650 yen, but they would not recommend sticking them up your girlfriend's butt. Is that a concern? <laughs> <laughs> what are they like pop rock bath salts? <laughs> like, All right, I feel like the is that something people do with bath salts is putting them up their butts? Because I wasn't aware of that really. I've never used bath salts, um, but I didn't know it was something that was commonly put up the anus. The creepy vibe is now dissipated for some reason. They're just trying to mess with us. If these are ghosts, they're just horny ghosts. It's fine. <laughs> now, besides the pop rock booty salt. And why wouldn't you put them up your boyfriend's butt? Yeah, or, or that's okay. You can put them up your boyfriend's butt, but you can't put them up your girlfriend's butt and the other random items. One of the other things that this corner is known for are like mystery box vending machines that have notes on each box. There's like a little description on each one. Mm. Is it dirty too? Don't yep. put it in your butt. <laughs> <laughs> talking about, I don't want to be quoted <laughs> saying this kind of stuff. Like, I don't want to be quoted for that butt thing. <laughs> So besides that first one nook of vending machines, we also discovered a few more inlets. No, I want to know what the boxes say. She could have turned off the camera and then paraphrased it for us. Come on. It's facing the street around the corner. There's even more back here. Which seemed to what? be filled with more just random items. What like those balls. Right? That's well, funny. It has a warning. What? Oh. Hell no. I'm coming out. Hold on. It says, please don't leave your cardboard boxes here. There are actual people living here and there's a sleeping baby. All right, I'm okay. Even though the evidence was piling up that this corner wasn't actually that creepy. All right, there's another popcorn machine back here. There are a fair amount of cardboard boxes, to be fair. The design of the place was just kind of run down and like a little fun housey. Why do I feel like I'm about to get jump scared? It's hard to tell like where the alleyways go. And once you're inside them, 
they're very claustrophobic, and you can kind of see between the machines, so you unexpectedly catch glimpses of people walking through the other passageways. Hey! <laughs> I'm just like looking at Rinrin. Rin. Hey! Yo, I thought on, it was like a mirror or something. Hey, Rinrin. Rin. Hello. Are you trying to jump scare us right now? Uh, almost. So after taking a look at our options of what we could actually buy, though there were some interesting items, I was most intrigued by the mystery boxes. Of course. Well, they're a mystery. Of course. Now, Rin, Rin has told us- I haven't stopped thinking about them. That most of the like little notes that are written on these boxes are pretty inappropriate. <laughs> We've found one that seems to be decently YouTube friendly. <laughs> I think it's about a comedian owing money and then running away. Why am I kind of nervous? And when I pulled it out, there was another note on the side. This feels like a escape oh, tonight. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's the note. Is it the same thing? The note actually said Happy Reiwa Era, which is the new imperial era of Japan that just started pretty recently. So if nothing else, this mystery box could only have been in there for a couple of months. There's some words oh. on the inside. It's a choco bat. It looks like chocolate sticks. Like nice. Coffee, which I Hell think yeah. is a pretty normal item, given all the suspense. It tastes a yeah. little stale. <laughs> she took a big fucking bite of that. I mean, come on. This woman is, she's got some fucking tits on her, man. She's brave as shit. I can't, mm -mm. She's like, ah. <laughs> like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> but it's good. Oh. I think of all the things we could have gotten, that's pretty safe. Mm-hmm. Your chocolate on your teeth. Oh, I'm sure. There was, however, another note on the inside of the wrapping. It's an address. That was a little strange. <laughs> We're not going to the address. We're not going to the address. In Atami. It's so far away. It's not even Tokyo. We're gonna keep the bats and we're gonna we're gonna keep it at that. So in addition to our choco bats, Tyler had been just generally interested in hot food vending machines. And there happened to be a hot popcorn machine like right there. So we nice. bought a bag for 220 yen. Oh, it's on. And it basically just takes a bag of unpopped kernels, puts them into an internal microwave for about a minute or two, and then serves them to you. Oh, yep, there it is. Ready? That's oh, very that's cool. Long. Okay. There's no way of telling, like, how long the kernels have been in there unpopped, but they tasted pretty good. Oh, that's great. You want some popcorn? All right. This is a great thing to Thank put you. into a vending machine. Agreed. Mm. It's really good. Overall, my final take is that the whole creepy thing seems to be sort of like a publicity stunt to get people to come to the vending machines. And you can tell after reading a lot of the signs and notes that it's all meant to be like a big- That's cool. It's just someone's house, they're just messing with people. That's definitely what's happening. It's just a prank. It's just a prank, bro. Bra. <laughs> bro. Though I think it is a fair warning to not put bath salts up your butt. Yes. All right. So that I think that in general, we should all follow that rule. Don't put bath salts up your butt. There are things that are for up the butt. Bath salts, not one of them. That was the creepy corner. Yep. <laughs> it is obviously nighttime right now, but I do have one final vending machine that I wanted to visit that mm. is nearby. It is hot ramen in a can. Ooh, so yum, I, I love some. ramen. Exactly. So I had seen this hot ramen in a can in another Japanese vending machine video, and it seemed like a pretty solid thing to get after a day filled with exciting things, but not really things that you want to eat a lot of. So I thought it would be a fun, quick thing to grab and try out to finish out the video. Boy, was I wrong. Are we lost? <laughs> so we had been working off of this video in particular to locate the machine, which told us that it was somewhere in Akihabara, but not exactly where. However, in the background of this shot, you can see the K bookstore on the opposite. Right, corner. okay. So I figured if we went to the K books in Akihabara, we would find it. But when we got there, there was no ramen in sight. Shit. It was then that I realized that this video was from 2013. Shit. I kind of forgot was a long time ago. So probably. Yeah, 2013 is 10 years ago now. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's 2022 now, but it's tail end of 2022. Right, so I can't believe it. I go back on YouTube and see videos of myself from 2009 and I'm like, shit. 
That was eons ago. Probably either the K books or the vending machine had moved in the, you know, like six years since then. Still determined to find some soup, we started just searching online for any clues. Okay, we've been looking for the hot ramen for a hot second. Um, I think we might have found a lead. My original lead may not have been a lead at all. Um, we're gonna find it. Besides that, we also tried asking one of the maids who was advertising her maid cafe on the street for pointers, while Tyler just started running around the streets by himself. <laughs> the maid told us that she had never heard of a hot ramen machine, but what? there was a hot Odin in a can machine nearby that she knew of, which is another type of Japanese soup. I was gonna I say, I don't know what hot Odin, Odin is. Tyler called me, oh, you found it? And told me that he had found a hot Odin machine a few blocks away. Way. Man, he must have moved fast. Mm -hmm. Where did he go? He's, he left. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Oh, he's running. He's running. How did you find it? I ran around the block, I found it. This is such a wild quest. <laughs> <laughs> they were all like, pretty easy to find until this point. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler suspects that this is the same corner that we saw in the original video. Oh, is this it? Yeah, oh. it is. And it's really just that the K books has moved to okay. the location. Okay, okay. They've gotten rid of the ramen from the machine. And I think he might be right. So Oh, yeah, it kind of does look like it. Soup. Yeah. Which one should we get? They had either a fish ball or a beef tendon Odin. And we Ooh, chose three. beef tendon. And then... Oh, it's hot. Oh, my fingers. Keep it hot. Because the popcorn makes sense, right? There's a little internal microwave. It puts it in there, blah, blah, blah. How do they just keep the cans hot? Are they just hot nonstop? That seems like a lot of energy and like it wouldn't keep the food good. Odin is known for having a lot of different veggies and items in it, notably Ooh, daikon, yum. which is like a type of radish. Mm -hmm. It's not really like ramen, but at that point I was down for anything. Surprise, it's larva. Oh no. Ooh. Oh, it smells good. These hot soup cans usually have a toothpick inside with which you eat all of the solid bits. Sorry, Rinder, and I've stuck my finger in it now. <laughs> I think it's this that you're supposed to, yep, there you oh. go. But our toothpicks seem to have something already on it. This is konjac. So I ate that first. It's supposed right. to be good for you. Oh, it's good for me. It tastes good for me. <laughs> it tastes good for me. Yeah. <laughs> Besides that, I think you're just supposed to drink the broth. Oh, that's actually really good. Mm. Yeah. The broth is awesome. Which makes it hard to share with multiple people. Oh, I uh, bit into the toothpick. So Rin Rin sat this one out. We were missing some spoons, I think, a little bit. Just a little <laughs> yeah. bit. I was surprised by the amount of stuff that was in there. That's good. <laughs> like things just kept coming out. That one was good. I ate a fair amount of my own hair, mm. which was mediocre but the radish was good. And they were generally pretty solid. Is that a quail egg? This egg, which we found about 10 minutes into eating the soup. Not bad. It's okay. The egg is good. It's been in there. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Overall, I would say that this soup was pretty good and it feels hearty. I'm into it. And as a vending machine product, it makes sense if you want like a hot dinner on the go. But for us, I'm not sure it was worth all of the time we spent running around looking for it. Though I am. I mean, you got it for your video though. So in that case, it's worth it. I'm amazed that in the end, we found any hot soup in a can at all. So I guess I'm not in a position to complain. There you go. That, we had visited all of our unique Japanese vending machines as well as one more normal coffee one. Naturally. <laughs> Overall, I thought that all of the machines were pretty fun and left quite an impression. I'm not sure we fully answered the question of why they all exist, except for maybe just as a side hustle for selling cat purses, but I think they all employ <laughs> some version of the be kind of out there for press purposes tactic. So even though they may not actually sell oh, Okay, so those are toy bugs. I thought they were bugs to eat. I was like, God damn, they're going off the deep end with the eating of the bugs there. That are desirable for everyday use, minus maybe the Odin. They do attract new customers through articles, videos, or just word of mouth. So they're sort of like low maintenance versions of insta-famous foods slash attractions. Personally, my favorite part of the day, besides the larva, of course, was just getting to see different parts of the city. We did spend a lot of time on the train. And I think I love next it. time we're in Japan, 
Japan, we'll definitely be visiting some more unique vending machines, but maybe not spicy ones, for Tyler's sake. Thank you guys so much for watching, and once again, a big thank you to Rin Rin for helping us explore these vending machines. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. Here are my social media handles, and a big shout out to Audrey for watching. Thanks for watching, Audrey, and I will see you guys a next time. Nice. Oh shit, I did it. I did it again where I do the thing and it starts playing all over again. And I don't mean to. All right, well, that was really interesting. I'm glad I watched that. I didn't know that you could do that much with vending machines. And that made me want to visit Japan and Tokyo even more. I feel like my husband and I would have a great time. Um, trying out all those vending machines. How fun, how fucking fun. Um, plus all the public trans, I just love it. I just love it. I just wanna go to Japan. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a coughing fit now. <clears throat> so with that, before I go into that coughing fit, I better say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being subscribed to Americans Learn. B by all means, if you wanna become a patron, please go ahead and do so. We would love it. Until then, until next time. Bye-bye.